Natalie here with the DNR Outdoor Adventure Center. You probably remember me when I was from when I was at your school uh, a few months back uh, for phase one of your Michigan Fisheries Education Initiative program. We introduced um, and discussed the Great Lakes ecosystem and specifically what types of creatures are found um, right in the Detroit River. Uh, we introduced um, which creatures were uh, producers, primary consumers, secondary consumers, and tertiary consumers. Um, and we also discussed what a fisheries biologist does and how you are helping when you purchase a fishing license. Phase two of your program is going to focus specifically on the parasitic, fascinating, but invasive sea lamprey. We'll talk about the impacts that it's had on uh, Great Lakes fish species and also uh, the Great Lakes fisheries economy since it was introduced into the Great Lakes system. We'll also discuss what is being done currently to reduce the numbers of sea lamprey in the Great Lakes. Some of these things are actually being done right here in the Detroit River area in the Huron Erie Corridor, which includes the area between lakes Huron and Erie. So that would be the St. Clair River, Lake St. Clair, and the Detroit River. Thanks again for joining me for phase two of the Michigan Fisheries Education Initiative. So for, during the first half of our sea lamprey program, we'll want to review what an invasive species is and what many of their characteristics tend to be. And then we'll look at the unique characteristics of the sea lamprey up close and personal with our live OAC sea lamprey. And then we'll want to take a look at the sea lamprey's life cycle because managing and controlling an invasive species like this requires understanding the different stages of its life cycle. To review, remember that an invasive species is a species that is not native to that area. It's often introduced to an area by accident, or if on purpose, it's not realized at the time that there are harmful species. And they would have all or most of the following characteristics. They eat large amounts of food usually. They tend to be aggressive towards other native species that they would be competing with for resources. Um, they have very few predators to keep them in check, if any at all. And they tend to reproduce quickly, uh, meaning often or in very large numbers of offspring. Um, generally, they are harmful to native species and can even be harmful to human health and or our economy in some cases. Um, and that does include the sea lamprey. So what is a sea lamprey? First off, a sea lamprey is actually a fish. It is not an eel or a leech, even though it may behave like a leech. It is native to the Atlantic Ocean and is an invasive species here. In the second half of our program, we'll talk about how it got here. You can see in this photo on the right that they have a large round mouth that works like a suction cup to attach to a fish. They have rows of inward curling teeth and a rough rasping tongue that they use to make a wound on a fish when they begin to feed on it. They're also missing some things. They have no scales and they have no bones. They're scaleless fish and their skeleton is actually cartilage only. Cartilage is the hard but flexible stuff that makes your ears and your nose. They also have fewer fins than most fish, only a dorsal, which would be the fin on the back and caudal fin, which is actually the tail. Also, they don't have a swim bladder. Uh, swim bladder is very important for most fish. Do you know what a swim bladder is? Think about it for a second. 
Think about what a fish might need to float. A swim bladder is basically like a balloon in the tummy of a fish that helps them to float. Sea lamprey do not have one. Let's take a look at some of these and other features of the sea lamprey up close. Meet the Outdoor Adventure Center live sea lamprey. This particular sea lamprey seems to be unusually active at this time. They do spend most of their time in the aquarium attached to the side with their suction cup mouth like this one is right here. But let's take a look at some of their interesting features. Remember that they are a primitive type of fish that is different from most of the fish that we would come across. Those circles, the line of circles that you see behind the eye of the sea lamprey are its gills. They do pump water in and out. Remember that gills are what allow a fish to pull oxygen from water, whereas our lungs um, pull oxygen from air. They do have eyes, as you can see. Let's look at this one right here. That is the eye of the sea lamprey. And it looks like we can kind of see its gills pumping behind the eye. Yep. Interestingly, the sea lamprey nose is actually that circle on the top of their head there. You can kind of see how the sea lamprey uh, mouth forms an attachment. It has a kind of a line of um, a line of uh, tiny little filaments around the edge. And let's take a look at this one's mouth here. That's a great look at that crazy looking mouth that they would attach to the side of a fish's body. See the inward curling teeth there? And the rasping tongue that would come out and basically form kind of a wound on the fish's body. And then they're able to um, feed on the fish's bodily fluids like blood and other things like that. It's all sort of like a vampire, you could say. The first step in controlling an invasive species like the sea lamprey is understanding its biology and life cycle, like where it is found and what it would be doing at different times of year. Sea lamprey have a life cycle that actually lasts for several years and different control methods target lamprey at certain stages of the life cycle, which we'll look at during the second half of the program. This image here shows the entire life cycle, but we're gonna actually break it up into pieces and talk about what the lamprey do during each stage of their life. We'll start with the larva or baby sea lamprey. This image here at the bottom shows what sea lamprey do as larva after they hatch from an egg in the summer. They burrow down into soft sediment in a river and they filter feed on tiny plankton plants and animals like the picture shown here that float by. We talked about plankton as being a very important part of the food web of the Great Lakes in the first uh, phase of the program at your school. Remember when we formed the web with the yarn? Anyways, these are the types of things that larval lamprey would eat. The plant plankton, algae, and animal plankton like the daphnia shown here. Note that lamprey can actually stay a larva in this form for up to 10 years. After lamprey are done being a larva, they come out of the sediment and they go through a metamorphosis. You've probably learned about this process with animals like butterflies and frogs. Lamprey do something like that too. A lot of other organisms do. Their body changes to the form with the suction cup mouth and inward curling teeth that we saw on our OAC lamprey. This happens between June of one year 
and March the next year, so over about 10 months. Once they have fully formed that new body type, they migrate downstream or with the current of the river to a lake where they feed on the bodies of a host fish like you see in the image circled here and like we talked about when we looked at our live sea lamprey. They will basically spend one year feeding on fish bodies as a parasite. Let's take a closer look at what actually happens during this phase of the lamprey life. The photo here on the top shows the sea lamprey actually attached to a lake trout, which is a large species of native fish that people fish for in the Great Lakes. And it's also an important predator species in the Great Lakes food web. This third arrow is also pointing to a wound that was left from another lamprey that had fed on that trout. In the sea lamprey's native range, like in the Atlantic Ocean, Fish have defenses against the lamprey because they've been living together for millions of years. Unfortunately, our fish, like this lake trout, have no defense against this parasitic lamprey uh, when they were introduced to the Great Lakes. So even if the lamprey don't kill these fish right away, the fish are certainly weakened by the lamprey and likely die sooner than they would have. So now we're at the last phase of a sea lamprey's life. By this time, they've already spent a year or a season feeding parasitically on fish bodies. The last thing they do, uh, sometime between March and July, so in the spring and early summer, is they spawn or lay eggs as adult lamprey. It is literally the last thing they do. When it's time for the lamprey to spawn, they leave the lake and they no longer feed on fish or anything actually. They're done eating completely. Uh, they only have one last thing to do in their life, which is to lay eggs. So they return to streams or rivers, like the one they started their life out as eggs, and they actually build a crescent shaped nest, like you see here. Uh, with the arrow pointing in the diagram. Um, while spawning, they attach their mouth to the rocks. After sea lamprey spawn, they die soon after, probably within days or weeks of spawning. Once they transition from parasitic feeders to adult spawners, their digestive systems actually no longer work and starts to degrade. So they're physically not able to eat anymore. Let's take a look at some real specimens that show the different life cycle stages that we've talked about. We'll see eggs, tiny larvae, bigger larvae, and small parasitic juveniles. These specimens are not alive anymore and they're kept in jars in liquid that keeps them preserved. Let's take a look. These specimen jars here show the different stages of the sea lamprey life cycle. Let's take a look at each one. This first jar here is showing sea lamprey eggs. This second jar is showing sea lamprey larvae at the size they would be when hatching from the eggs. Notice that they are very, very tiny. Recall that when sea lamprey are larvae, they are not parasitic. They burrow into sediment and filter feed on things like plankton. This jar here also shows sea lamprey in the juvenile stage. Recall that after that point, they go through a metamorphosis to change into a parasitic feeder. This jar here shows a sea lamprey juvenile that is starting to look more like the adult form of the sea lamprey. You can see the eye there, the line of gills behind the eye, the fins, and let's see. 
I'm starting to see the formation of those inward curling teeth. So where do our live sea lamprey at the OAC fall in the life cycle stages? Let's revisit them to find out. Now these sea lamprey came to us from the Great Lakes Fishery Commission, which provides educational sea lamprey to institutions like ours. And they also um, are involved in the management of uh, sea lamprey management activities um, throughout Michigan. We have four sea lamprey. They are all males. And actually we know that they are males because males have a feature that's easy to recognize. Notice that rounded ridge that goes along the back of the lamprey's body. That is a characteristic of male sea lamprey. These are adult lamprey that are beyond the parasitic feeding stage. Um, you could say post spawning stage. Recall the life cycle of sea lamprey and that they actually die after spawning. Their bodies are unable to process food physically and so we have them basically keeping them alive while they're slowly dying. Um, so after sea lamprey spawn in the wild, they die, they no longer feed, and that's the stage that these lamprey are in right now. So there would be no worry of a sea lamprey attaching to us while, they're take, while we're taking care of them. Um, even if they did attach, um, they would not be able to feed. Before we move on, remember this slide from the beginning listing the general characteristics of an invasive species. Instead of saying high reproduction, uh, like where I have highlighted there, we could say has lots of babies. This could mean having a few babies very often or having a huge number of babies once or a couple of times. Where would you say sea lamprey fall based on their life cycle? Basically, they have tons of babies once. One female can lay between 20,000 and 100,000 eggs. So they give it their all one time and then they die. You saw all those eggs in that jar in the previous slide. Remember that lamprey build crescent-shaped nests out of rocks for spawning and laying eggs. Let's watch a short video of what this actually looks like. Thanks for sticking with me. So that was the first half of your sea lamprey program where we focused mainly on the biology and the life cycle of the sea lamprey. So for the second half, um, we're going to look at how they got to the Great Lakes, 
the damage that they have caused to our uh, fisheries and our fish populations here and what's currently being done to control and manage the sea lamprey in the Great Lakes and in the Detroit River area. We'll see you for part two.